Okay, I'm going to cut to the chase. I found some inconsistencies in your statements and those of other witnesses. I don't... I don't know anything about that. How about you walk me through it again? Tell me exactly how the assault happened. Again? One more time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I went to bed early, but then Connor called and we got to talking. And, and how long did you talk? A couple of hours. And then you fell asleep? Yeah. What then? And then he raped me. You need to be more specific. Let's go back to when he was standing by your bed. Did he say anything? He said that if I screamed, he'd kill me. And he took something out of his backpack and he blindfolded me with it. Anything else? Yeah, um, a condom. Then what happened after he blindfolded you? He tied my hands. No, first he tied my hands. Using what, the shoelaces? Also from the backpack? No, they were mine. Um, just to be clear, the blindfold and the condom were from his backpack, but the laces and the knife were yours? Okay, got it. Okay, so how long did the assault last? I don't know. Hang on. Five minutes. Around that, yeah. Did he penetrate you vaginally, anally, both? Um, vaginally? Was the penetration with his penis or his fingers? Not his fingers. So when it was over, what happened then? Uh, he put something on my stomach and took a picture of it. You were still blindfolded? Mm -hmm. How'd you know he was taking a picture of you? Because I saw flashes. Um, and, and he said that if I told anyone that he'd post the picture. Did he say anything else? said that it wasn't as good as how he pictured it in his head. Let me ask you one thing so I'm sure I understand. In your statement, you wrote that you tried calling Connor, then called Judith, then cut yourself free. Yeah. In that order. Yeah. Okay, look, Marie. There are inconsistencies in your story. I mean, the dialing alone, we have four different versions, tied, untied, with your hands, with your toes. I dialed with my hands. Then why'd you tell Connor you used your toes? I, maybe I did. You just told me you didn't. Well, it's, it's confusing. For us, too, and, and we're not the only ones. What, what do you mean? There are other people who don't know that what you told us about the rape, that it was the truth. Who? Well, Judith, for one. She said that? And Connor's statement. What What about it? It's also inconsistent with yours, so he knows the version you told him, and then he finds out it's not what you told us. It makes it very hard for him to believe you, too. He said he didn't believe me? Why, why, would, he, why would he say that? And then there's a crime scene. I mean... We couldn't find any physical evidence there was anyone else in your apartment that night. But there was. Marie, I want to be really clear about something. I don't think you're a bad person. And I also don't think this was some big thought out thing. But given the inconsistencies in your story and the lack of evidence, this is becoming a puzzle that is hard for us to piece together. Right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a version that does fit together, okay? A young woman, been through a ton of bad stuff, on her own for the first time, just broke up with her boyfriend, feeling isolated, lonely, might, on the spur of the moment, come up with something without thinking it through that will get her the attention she needs because you haven't got enough attention in your life. I can see that. You haven't been cared for or protected, and hey, that's not your fault. So Marie, tell me, I need to know, it's my job. Is there really a rapist running around that we should be looking for? Marie. Marie, we can't leave here till you give me an answer. No. There was no rapist. No one came in your apartment. And the shoelaces, the knife, you did that. Okay. Thank you, Marie. Can I go now? We need a statement. 